Hi, I'm Gabby Stats. Um, I'm a beekeeper. I became interested in bees in elementary school. I decided I wanted to get bees and so I told my family about it and they're like, okay, so you have to attend some classes and then we'll get you some bees. And so here I am, years later, still with bees. A few of the tools that we have here today are the filters. Um, some people do three different types of filters. It is to filter out some of the icky stuff. We only do a few to keep more of the pollen and healthier stuff in there, but it's all about self-preference. Here's the smoker. This just calms down the bees and makes it so they can't get um, like signals from the queen because the queen produces pheromones which tells them when to attack basically and this cuts it off. We don't use this too much during harvesting because it does um, make the honey taste a little smoky. So we use the brush to help brush all the bees off. Here we have a knife with hot water and a pan for whenever we get the frames that will help cut the sealed wax on top, revealing the honey, where we take it over to the spinner. And from here, we just spin it, and all the honey should drop down to the bottom. And then we'll have a bucket here, and all the honey will flow into there where it will be filtered. And that's the bucket. And then from there, it will be bottled. We got this hive this year, which is, it's pretty rare to get honey off of a new hive, but these bees are the most hardworking bees that we've ever had, so this is our second time harvesting this year. This is a drone bee. The purpose of a drone bee is basically just to eat all the honey, and come this time of the year, all the female bees break their wings and kick them out of the hive because they will eat all the honey during the winter season. So you start picking out the drone bees, like here's a drone right here. You can see the size difference between the males and the females. All right, here's another male. But you can see how much bigger the male is from the female. Yes. Now the queen bee, she'll be longer. Will we see her? Probably not. She's down here somewhere okay. and there's 50, 100, 70,000 bees in here. Yeah. What you can notice is the difference between the drone um, drone bees, which are the male bees, and the female bees. Um, the drone bees have bigger eyes and just a bigger, bulkier type body. The females um, are tinier with tinier eyes. Um, and the female bees run the whole entire hive. Like I said before, the male bees get booted during the winter, so. And the females break their wings to get rid of them? Unfortunately, and you'll see them crawl around. I didn't know that. The ground. <laughs> New info. Like there's a male bee here. You can see the males. Yeah, unfortunately, so when we first came up here, I started seeing the females attacking the males. Yeah. But, so the reason why it's he does all the heavy duty stuff is because the bees produce wax, which you can see a little bit right there, and it makes everything really stuck together. For me, it's harder to get all that open, but this is the wax. Um, you can see in here, there's some beetles. There's a few. Mm -hmm. And those are bad for the hive. They will kill the hive, yes. Have you guys had a lot of problems with hive beetles? In some of our previous hives, yes. Um, I mean, there's going to be hive beetles wherever. Unfortunately. Which hive you're in. Okay. Um, they do a pretty good job at maintaining them. So how do the bees take handle the hive beetles? Um, they entrap them 
in little, um, I'm blanking on what you call Like them. a comb? Yeah, they end up in like a comb. And well, you see this guy's fighting him, this one, they'll sting it. Yeah, they will. Oh, they will? They'll sting yeah, the high beetle? they'll sting the high beetle, they're a cockroach. Well, we do live in the low country. Yes. Okay. So cool. a healthy hive will take care of itself. Good. So when you start getting when if the if the hive isn't healthy, the beetles will reproduce a lot more and they'll take over. Yeah, like this is a healthy amount. Like yeah. we shouldn't have to worry about this. Okay. So if you want to come take a look up here, this should be pretty interesting. So this is just all the frames. All of these most likely just have honey in them. Um, I think we might take a look at how much is in these two. I don't really know because we want to make sure that we keep enough in there for um, the winter for them because they should just be able to do it themselves without any help from us. Like during the new, when you first get a hive, you give them sugar water for the first like six-ish weeks and that just helps them start creating their hive. But during the winter, they rely on the honey that they got from the previous season. And so we just gotta make sure that we leave them enough. So the super, which is one of these, so we have five supers. They should weigh around how many pounds do you think? Like 50 pounds. So they weigh a lot. Um, what's causing the weight is um, all the honey, which it's a lot, it's super heavy. So this is a medium super. That is, it's medium depth. It's a 10 frame, so there's 10 frames across, and it's medium depth. They have a deeper one. Um, we went with all, you know, when we started beehive or beekeeping, we went with all mediums just to make it easy. Everything's consistent. A lot of a lot of beekeepers will do the brood, you know, the babies in the deeps. The deep, yeah. And amazing. then the honey in the the mediums. We just went with soup, mediums everywhere. How did you know that the bees that it was ready to harvest? What was the giveaway for that? Nothing. You don't you don't just know experience. What we've been you know we've been doing this for you know a few years. We know late July is usually when they're you know. The, the nectar flow is done. So right here you see capped honey. Um, and they haven't gotten over here yet, but that would also be capped honey. There doesn't seem to be any brood babies over in here. And that's more capped honey. Um, so is this a, will you take this honey? Um, There's not enough on this one. Okay. Right. So do you kind of do like a 50% or more? How do you judge that? Um, We're going to want them full. full. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Look at that beauty. So this is a full. Oh, wow. So this is, I don't know, two or three pounds of honey. Do you want to hold it? I do. <laughs> okay. Wow. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's a beautiful color. Are they eating it down here on the bottom? If yes, yes. they will. The stuff Those. that's come apart, they're gonna munge on it. And all the honey is gonna taste different. It all is based on what's in their surrounding areas. We created a um, a pollinator garden, um, so they do go to that. But they can travel up to like I believe it's three miles away to go. Um, find nectar and all that stuff so it's kind of cool because you get your natural flavors from what's around you which also there's a little thing that you can put in the front of the hives that collects the pollen mm -hmm. therefore during allergy season if you're allergic to pollen you can take the pollen that you collect and put it in your tea or something and it'll help with allergy season and eating their honey also helps. also honey helps too right. You know, because we've disturbed some of the honey, they're they're drinking what's been disturbed, so it's not lost to you know competitors. So the really yellow is the ho is the pollen, yes. is that right? And the darker ones are the brood. Yeah. The baby bees are in there. Mm -hmm. So this, this is the part is they don't like. The part that they get very irritated about. And you can hear the difference between like 
like there's a lot more buzzing now because there's a lot more bees in the air that are upset. They're also bumping into your, I don't know if you noticed, they're bumping into you in a different way. Before they would just buzz up near you, now they're like kind of aggressively poking at you. Yeah. So I'm gonna smoke and you're just gonna brush the sides for my dad. Okay. So we don't kill. Oh, the edges. Yeah. Okay. And I'm gonna set this down on okay. Starting at the back. Okay. All right, girls. Move it, guys. You were good on this side. Was it moving, moving? And like I said earlier, we try not to use too much smoke on the honey, but because we're not harvesting this, we can use as much smoke as needed. One thing you never want to do when about to harvesting a, or going into any beehive that is, never eat a banana, because that's what the queen pheromone smells like. So if you eat a banana, they will more likely go after you because that's their attack. Smell. So, do you want to feel how heavy this is? Yes. Wow. Look at that. There are bee parts in there, and that's why a lot of people do filter. Um, this is why we filter. You can see the bee parts once everything is spun and put in the bucket. You mean legs and arms and legs and arms and, and heads and heads stuff and butts and all that fun stuff. So the goal was to cut off as little as possible. As we give these frames back, this starts off with just a piece of wax paper in the middle, and the bees have to fill it out. And so the reason why we have a pan there and it's not just going anywhere is because we also um, lay that in there, and then what you can do with that wax is you can make chopsticks, soaps, you can make anything with the wax. And this is the process. It's Can we go up there and have our frame? We're going to get all our friends over here, aren't we? We're all going to be interested. Mmm, free what honey. Do you <laughs> you can see. Show them the difference. That, oh, yeah. That side's filled with honey still. That side's been drained. And now you feel the difference. And wait. Oh, wow. Holy cow, it just is like feather light. Wow. Sure. So now you just slide these back into the hive? Now we'll put them in the box. What we're gonna do is we'll keep them for, we keep them for the winter because what we don't want is we don't want, this is all filled out. Like I said, what this, start, this box started off as thin as that at the beginning of summer. Okay. It was just a piece of wax in the middle. And so they had the, you can see it's, what, an inch, inch and a half deep now, wide. Yeah. They had to build all that wax. Now, if we put this back in there, this gives um, the moss, the beetles, that gives them places to hide oh. and to brew, to, to reproduce. So we don't want So that. we don't, we won't put these back in. We'll put these in the freezer, freeze them for a couple weeks. And then in the spring, we'll give them back to them. Oh. So that they can, they don't have to rebuild this. I mean, you're, you're talking millions of of uh, bees going out, flying around, trying to just to build this up. Got it. So, see, how I'm just kind of right. Uh -huh. I'm just using that as a guide. Okay. Right. It's just slightly long, deeper than than the. Right. So just I just slide it right along there, rather than trying to dig this way. Uh -huh. I'm just gonna go right down there. Okay. Oh, oh, that you can totally you get the feeling on that. It's like um, fish skin. <laughs> it's like filleting a fish. And then you don't have to go after that stuff. You sure? Yeah, it's all good. Oh, I feel like I would not be doing your dad proud. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is satisfying. So it'll come out of there without? Um, no, it's okay. If not, like you can see here that we have a few unmarked Places stuff. Places that did it. Yeah. Okay, it's all good. When bees find a good area to go pollinate, they will, on the front of the hive, they will do their waggle dance where they shake and point which direction the area is. And that alerts other bees to go to that area 
and go pollinate and get a bunch of um, nectar and pollen. Okay, so one thing about bees is they are attracted to darker colors, so they go after darker colors, which is unfortunate because they're wearing black, so <laughs> they've left me alone. Um, and it's why my mom's very unfortunate and gets stung a lot because she has darker hair. But they don't see white as a threat, but they do see black as a threat because it looks like a bear. And mm. so, wear white or light colors. Light colors whenever you're harvesting. What? There's a bee being born. He's right here. <gasps> oh, look at her little head. Hello, baby. does it take them to get that to just move back into the hive like to just be like okay well, they'll be there the rest of the day I'll probably put these there and they'll just consume all the leftover honey and oh, then they'll okay. go in at night oh so you just kind of let them pick at it yeah nice and when a hurricane's coming and we know about it and it's gonna be pretty bad we have to go like tie them down and stuff because they're pretty tall and due to the fact that they're on the cement blocks they're a little more unstable up there so during the night there's no bees out in they're roaming, all they're all sleeping, or doing what these do during the night. Depending on how much you want to filter, um, you know, the higher the number, the less it takes out. So um, we're just going to use we're just going to use one, the 600, which is the courses of them. And that's really just get the bee parts out, leave all the pollen. Now what happens is because we leave more pollen in the honey, it will crystallize quicker. Okay. Right, a lot of people filter everything out so it doesn't crystallize as quickly. And that's what stores do. Right? And that's what stores do, they take everything out. But we like the, all the stuff in it. But honey never goes bad, so if you just heat it up, the crystals will melt and you'll get honey again. Oh, going off of what he said, yeah, honey is not able to grow bacteria in it. Therefore, sorry. Therefore, it can never go bad. So basically, if you found some Egyptian honey, you could technically eat it and be perfectly fine. We are. Yeah. So what's happened is we have successfully been able to uncap all the honey, spin it, and what's happening right now is all the honey that was spun was in the bottom of this, and so now it is flowing into bucket with the filters and so it is being filtered right now and it goes down into the bottom bucket and you can see right now we're that high with honey um, you can see the dark line and then we will take that back and boil it and it creates just a nice clean wax with no honey, no bee parts in it, nothing of that type. And you can do whatever you want with it. And it gets messy. So that's one of the issues. Because you have to be pretty fast, which is why I normally leave this up to my mom. So she's in charge of the actual bottling process. And that is a jar of honey. So the first thing that we did for harvesting was getting the smoker ready. The smoker makes it so the bees calm down and makes it so the bees can't sense the queen's pheromones, causing them to calm down some. But that, we don't want to use too much of the smoker because it does um, make the honey taste like smoke. So we only use that in the very beginning. What we did was we went and smoked the hive, got them all calmed down, took off the top, and got the first super and put it over here. From there, we brushed off all the bees, making it so we could um, take a knife and cut the capped honey with the wax on top and put it in the spinner. Um, the extractor spins the honey, causing it all to go down to the bottom where we eventually have it fill into a bucket where it's filtered. Um, and then from that, we bottle it 
and that is how the bee um, harvesting process is done. So, thank you.